Did you know that leafcutter ants talk to each other? Not in the same way that you and me talk to each other, but in a very unique way. In fact, in two different ways. And we're gonna use this to listen to them. Here at Northumberland Zoo, we have a large colony of leafcutter ants. There's probably around 20 to 25,000 ants in this enclosure. And it has a very unique design. So in this tank here, we put their harvest. So this is what they take back to their nest. They don't eat this, but they take it back to their nest and they actually use it to grow fungus. So they never actually eat the leaves. So take it, they go along all of these little pathways and then eventually get back to this nest box here, which inside here holds the most precious thing of all, which is the fungus garden. It's a massive chunk of fungus and the fungus is what the ants eat. That's what makes them survive. So they need as much kind of materials as possible in order to cultivate their own fungus. So they're effectively gardeners. Yes, this nest box is made of Lego, which is a brilliant design because the Lego is actually kind of insulated. So it helps keep the nest nice and consistent with temperature and humidity, which needs to stay at 100% ideally and around 25 degrees. So right now it's perfect. You can see the ants are super busy down here. And we've got an addition here. For any of you who saw the original video, this is new. So this is a dump area. So ants are really, really clean and they wanna be able to take any waste that's in their nest away from the nest as far as possible and ideally dump it in water. Because if you leave it in the nest, it does actually produce quite harmful gases, nitrous oxide. So they come all the way down here. We train them and take about a week. And you can see some dump kind of left on the side there. Now that could be dead fungus, dead ants, um, and just kind of broken down harvest that they've used as well. The reason why we put it on a pump is so that the water is constantly circulating so that the ants can't build a bridge with their dump. The ants are incredibly clever and they could totally do that. So. This is our ant setup. What do ants have to talk about? Well, actually, they have quite a bit to talk about. When they're out in the jungles and they're trying to find new sources of harvest, because they know exactly what kind of stuff they need in order to break it down and grow their fungus. What they do is they go out in the jungle or go out in this enclosure, they find the target kind of sources that they need and they let the other ants know. And they do that by placing pheromones along these vines and along the trails. One of their types of communication is kind of a stinky, smelly goop. And it's super duper potent. So once the leaf cutter ants have cut their leaves, they need to make sure that they can make it all the way back to the nest safely. By leaving these breadcrumbs of scent along the trail, it helps keep the leaf cutters going in the right direction so that they don't get lost and they make it back to the nest safely. Soldier ants and larger kind of defense ants will kind of station themselves along that trail to protect the ants from being attacked whilst they're trying to get back to the nest with their leaves. Leafcutters also communicate by stridulation. Stridulation is kind of like a vibration and it's very, very similar to like the scratching of a vinyl record. They've got two different parts on their body. It's a stridulation organ and that's kind of like on their bottom abdomen. And then they've got like kind of like a receiving end on the next part up. And they kind of rub these two together and it makes that kind of scratching sound and they use it for various different types of communication. So I managed to film it when there was a leaf cutter ant just about to finish cutting out a leaf. And obviously once it gets to the end and it's about to cut the final section, it was vibrating its little abdomen. And then some other ants came running over to assist in holding the leaf so that it didn't drop it. Leaf cutter ants can also use this stridulation if they accidentally get buried. Um, it's very easy for like a little bit of dirt to come along and cover them up. So if they vibrate at just this right noise, ants will then start digging them out and recover anybody that's been lost. 
They also use the stridulation when they're nest building to work cooperatively, but it's not as much the sound that the ants are listening to, it's more the vibrations that they respond to. So this stridulation can happen between anything in 2 hertz and 46 hertz. And I did manage to record a little bit of sound with my microphone. The clicking noises that you can hear is the sound of them actually cutting through the leaves. It's the little chirps that are the stridulations that they're making. This wasn't quite clear enough for me, so I got out my macro lens and a bigger microphone to see if I could get it any clearer, and I was really impressed with the results. Some research has suggested that these stridulations also help the ant cut through the leaf easier, vibrating it at such a frequency that it makes it easier to cut through. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed that video about the leaf cutter ants and you enjoyed seeing our setup. The ants are doing super duper well. And if you've got any questions about ants, then please do drop them in the comment box below. And if you haven't done already, please do like our video and subscribe to our channel to see more content like this. Thank you so much and we shall see you next week.